Reflections from Torch Trust, focusing on Christian faith and sight loss. Hello and welcome to Reflections, the show from Torch Trust that focuses on faith and disability in today's world. I'm your host, Marilyn Baker, and we're so happy to have you with us today. Over the next half hour, we'll be hearing some joyful music, some uplifting spiritual reflections, and we'll be celebrating a very special event which is happening in London today. We're talking about the London Marathon. And if you're a regular listener, you may remember us speaking with friend of the show, Hazel Groves, back in March, about her decision to train and take part in the marathon for the first time this year. I do wonder how Hazel is feeling right now. I think I'd be rather nervous. Well, our producer Grace spoke with Hazel ahead of her run today. Let's see what she had to say. So Hazel, thank you for joining us once again on Reflections. Now, obviously we spoke to you a while back uh, while you were training for the London Marathon. When people are listening to this, it will actually be the day of the marathon. So can you talk us through how you'll prepare on the day? So um, we're very lucky. We've managed to book somewhere to stay quite close to the start. Mm. Um, so we haven't got too early a start um, for the morning. I'll be staying overnight with um, my friend Linda, who's going to be my guide runner for the day. Um, and we'll be quite close to the start in Greenwich, ready to go. Ah, fantastic. And um, do you know what time you'll be starting? Do you get a scheduled s slot for this? Um, we, we, will, we will know by the day. Uh, we go up to London on the Wednesday before the run oh. um, to collect your number and to get the, the final sort of instructions before the day. Ah, you can tell I don't know anything about running, you see. I don't know how it works at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably because there's just so many people um, on on other races, you can you collect your number and on on the morning, but with with forty odd thousand people doing the marathon, they, they need to do it before the day. <laughs> yeah, that's a phenomenal thing. That many people all running, that's incredible. And um, I don't I don't know if you can imagine it, but how do you think you'll be feeling on the day? <laughs> um, I'm expecting it to be um, very excited, but also a little bit scared at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I imagine it's, it's such a big a big thing and you haven't run any marathons previously. This is your first one, is that right? Yeah, this is my first one. But I, I also, um, I went to university near the start in Greenwich. So um, it'll almost be like going back to a little bit of home turf um, for the, the start. So. Oh, that's nice. I went to Greenwich University. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll be hearing more from Hazel later in the show. Now, we aren't just in the London Marathon season, we're also in the time known as Eastertide, which means the period between Easter and Pentecost. Jesus has risen and it's time to celebrate. Let's hear now from Ian Lackey, a friend of Torch, who has been musing on some of the circumstances in which Jesus' followers met him again after the resurrection. I love the stories we have in the Bible about the appearances of Jesus after he'd been crucified and then raised from the dead. I particularly love the story about the two followers of Jesus going to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, where they'd seen Jesus killed. Suddenly, it's not just the two of them on the road. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself came and began walking with them, though they didn't recognise him. This story begins with two people walking along in despair, their hopes seemingly crushed. It ends with them returning to Jerusalem in buoyant mood. You could say it starts with them going to Emmaus with lead in their boots and returning to Jerusalem with wings on their heels. How does that change happen? By this time they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus would have gone on but they begged him to stay the night with them as it was getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he asked God's blessing on the food and then took a small loaf of bread and broke it and was passing it over to them when suddenly it was as though their eyes were opened 
They recognized him, and at that moment he disappeared. They began telling each other how their hearts had felt strangely warm as he talked with them and explained the scriptures during the walk down the road. That was from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 28 to 32. What was it that made the difference? Simply the realisation that Jesus really was alive and that they'd actually met him. The penny drops as Jesus breaks and blesses the bread. Was it the words he said, or was it the way he broke the bread? We don't know. However, what we do know is that Jesus, more often than not, reveals himself to us in the simplest of ordinary things. For example, he shows us what he's like as we read God's word, the Bible. Or he shows himself to us in the loving words or kind actions of other people. Certainly, the everyday lives of Christians I knew when I was a student were a key factor in my decision to follow Jesus for myself. When we're feeling lost and disappointed, understanding that Jesus is alive and can walk alongside us can really make all the difference. Back to Hazel. Obviously, uh, th those who've heard you on the show before and those who, who know you from Torch um, will know that you are a Christian. Um, does your faith play a part in your running? I, it's actually I, the thing I do love about particularly going for a lovely long run, um, particularly where I live um, down here on the south coast, is you feel so close to God because you're in the, you're in the outside. I like running along the coast, so you've got the sea. It's my I feel very peaceful and close to God on the seafront anyway. Um, and it's just because you have that time when you're just running, I mean, particularly for a long distance when you're running for maybe two or three hours, you just allow, you can allow your mind to to not focus on the daily grind, as it were, mm. about work and what's for dinner. You can just, it's almost like having your quiet time. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it, that's a really good thing about running. That's lovely. That's such a nice thing. That's like everyone connects with God in different ways, and you've you've found this way, which is really wonderful. It sounds very peaceful. <laughs> and sometimes I do run with music. Um, I do like a bit of Red Collective when I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I imagine that's quite good for kind of yeah, keeping you going, getting the beat there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And um, can you just remind us about the charity that you are running the marathon for? Yeah, so today I'm running for the Kent Association for the Blind because um, I, I benefited from their services. Um, they helped me with my long cane training and um, assistive technology and various of our social groups. Um, and I serve currently on the trustee board at the moment. So that's why when the opportunity came to, to run for charity, they, they were the ideal one for me because I really support and value the work that they do. Brilliant. And is is there still time for, for someone to um, donate at this point? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes, that would be lovely. Um, I have a Just Giving page, um, which is Hazel Groves KAB. Um, and um, that way you can, can you can find me and you can see all the, all the photos from all the training over the last few months as well. Oh, fabulous. Well, we wish you the very best. That's so exciting to think that, you know, this is, is happening right now. So we wish you all the best with it. And uh, it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And remember, if you'd like to support Hazel's Marathon Challenge, visit justgiving.com slash fundraising slash Hazel hyphen Groves K-A-B. Well, as we speak, Hazel will be waiting to start the marathon, so I'd like to invite you to join me in a prayer now. Father God, we pray for Hazel and for everyone who is running the marathon today. We pray for their health and well-being as they undertake this incredible challenge. We thank you for the human bodies you've given us. Let us be good custodians of them. We thank you that we are your creations and you are watching over us. Amen. Well, I'm sorry to say that we're all out of time for today. To find out more about any of Torch's services for blind and partially sighted people, 
visit our website, torchtrust.org. If you have a question or would like to leave us a comment, do get in touch on 01858 438 260. That's 01858 438 260 or email info at torchtrust.org. Until next week, from me, Marilyn and everyone on the Reflections team, goodbye and God bless. You've been listening to Reflections from Torch Trust. Thank you.